here are 70 Lightroom tips, tricks and secrets to make your editing life easier. Make sure to check the chapters of the video to quickly navigate through it. Not only can you use lighters to adjust the exposure, you can also drag the histogram and thus change the exposure of your images. You can make over or under exposure visible by clicking on those arrows in the corner of the histogram. The right side will show you overexposure as the red area, while the left side will show you underexposure as blue parts. With the crop tool, you can change its overlay by pressing O. This will help you compose your image for different situations. To level your images, go into the crop tool and use the straighten tool. With the tool active, you can create a line along the horizon and Lightroom will level your image along the line. Alternatively, you could also let Lightroom do this automatically by pushing the auto button. In the crop tool, you can also find a bunch of different presets when clicking on the custom button. Here you'll find different aspect ratios, for example, one by one for Instagram purposes. To remove sensor spots, you can use the spot removal tool. To make them visible, just click the visualize spots box down here. This tool will make it easier for you to find those sensor spots. You can even increase this effect by increasing the slider, or if you want, you can decrease it to get a better contrast. With the spot healing brush, you can not only get rid of sensor spots, but you can also remove smaller objects. For that, just switch from clone to here. Just use it like the brush tool in Photoshop and just brush over the objects you want to remove. With select subject or select sky, Lightroom tries to automatically select the subject or the sky. This is a very fast way to create complex masks. I, for example, use select sky all the time. One example for this is if I want to select the landscape in the foreground, I can simply create a sky mask like this, click on those three dots and just say invert. And here I have a perfect selection for the landscape in the foreground. In the same way, you can make the subject pop by using a select subject mask, click in this mask, click on the three dots, invert and now with the inverted subject mask bring down the exposure to make the subject pop. This works really good on wildlife photography for example. Using the color range mask you can pick up multiple color tones by simply holding down the shift key. The eyedropper tool is not only available with the color range mask but also with the luminance range mask. Once you activated the mask just hover over the image and click in the area you want to select. To adjust masks, we can make use of the add and subtract button. For example, I want to get rid of the selection in the sky, so I'm going to say subtract and here I'm using a simple linear gradient to subtract it from the mountain selection. Due to the red overlay of the masks, you won't always be able to see changes. So to quickly deactivate the overlay, just press O. You can also get rather complex selections by using the brush tool, just make sure to check the auto mask box. With the auto mask active, I can make a really precise mountain selection without affecting the fog in the foreground. With the radial gradient, if you hold down the control key and double click in the image, you can create a radial gradient that is as big as your image. One use for this is to create a vignetting effect Simply invert the mask again and bring down the exposure. The radial gradient can be used to add a very subtle but cool looking glow effect. Just place the radial gradient over edges like in this case on the mountains in the back and here bring up the blacks. And for even stronger glow you can bring down the dehaze to create this special effect. To create a polarization effect we are going to use a color range mask and click in the blue part of the sky. With that selection I am going to drop the exposure and thus we get a very dark deep blue sky just like with a polarization filter. You can quickly switch from color to black and white by pushing the button up here. Under the profiles menu there are many more profiles hidden behind the browse button. If you want to add a specific profile to the drop down menu, simply click the star icon in the upper right corner of the profile. Also, you can adjust the strength of the profile using the slider up above. 
Pushing it to the right will make the profile stronger, while pushing it to the left will make it weaker. A flat profile like Adobe Neutral might give you some more dynamic range in certain cases. To get a proper white balance, you can use the eyedropper tool, hover over the image and search for an area where all three color tones are close to each other. Increasing the temperature can give your photo a very cool golden hour look, so you don't always have to get a neutral white balance. Dropping the white balance temperature can give you a cold, spooky look which works great for forest scenes. If you're not sure how to expose your image, you can make use of the auto setting. This way you can get an idea how the image could look like. If you want to go further towards under or overexposure without clipping, you can hold down the shift key and double click on the whites for example. Lightroom will push the whites as far as possible without adding overexposure. This also works on the blacks most of the times. If you're still not sure about that, you can hold down the Alt key while adjusting the sliders to see exactly when underexposure is kicking in. And this again works also for the highlights and the whites to see when overexposure is kicking in. Instead of adding contrast via the slider, try using the different sliders below to add a proper looking contrast. This means just raising the whites, maybe also the highlights while bringing down the shadows and the blacks. This way you have way more control over the contrast. If you're aiming for a dreamy look, try to use negative clarity. This will almost add some kind of autumn glow effect to your images. Negative dehaze can be used to add some more layers of fog to your photo. In the tone curve you can find two different presets for contrast. One for medium contrast and one for strong contrast. Raising the black point in the tone curve will give your images a very soft look. To change points you can hold down the Alt key to get much more precise adjustments. For sunset or sunrise shots, try going into the red tone curve channel and pick the point for the highlights then drag it to the left. This will introduce some more red tones and thus make the whole image a lot warmer. If you're looking to achieve stronger autumn foliage, try dropping the green hue and the yellow hue. Another way of faking the polarization effect for the sky is to bring down the blue luminance. This will make the blue part of the sky darker and thus just add more contrast to the sky. At the same time raising, for example in this case, the yellow luminance and the green luminance will make the bright spots in the foreground a lot brighter and thus you can dodge certain areas of the image. Keep in mind, raising the luminance will lessen the saturation while dropping the luminance will increase the saturation. Using the small pin in the upper left corner of the panel will allow you to target specific colors of the image. Click on it once, then hover over the image and click on the area you want to change. If I want to add more saturation to the grass in the foreground, I click on it and drag the mouse upwards. If I drag it downwards, I'm going to remove saturation. This pin works for hue, saturation and luminance. If there might be purple color cast in the sky, go into the hue panel and bring down the purple hue. Thus we're getting rid of the purple tones and just introduce more blue to the sky. In the color grading panel, you can get much more precise adjustments by handling the shadows, the midtones and the highlights by itself. Just click on those little circles up in the menu. For intense sunset shots, go into the highlights and apply a very warm color tone in the red to yellow range. Make sure to pump up the saturation. For an even stronger effect, you can go into the midtones and apply the same thing. Deep blue shadows, on the other hand, work great on dark, grim scenes like this. In the color grading panel, you can also further adjust brightness of the shadows, the midtones, and highlights with the luminance slider. So, by using those sliders, you can further work on the contrast of the image. Once you have set up the split toning, you might play around with the blending and the balance sliders to get an idea of different looks. Increasing the blending will make the split toning effect stronger, while the balance on the left side, the shadows will get more affected and on the right side, the highlights will get more affected by the split toning. You can add sharpening to specific parts of the image, therefore we are going to use the masking slider. 
In this case, the sky won't get sharpened, while the landscape in the foreground will get sharpened. To make the sharpened area visible, just hold down the Alt key while clicking on the masking slider. For general sharpening settings, I'm always dropping the radius, increasing the detail all the way up, of course apply masking, and then finally sharpen the image. Chromatic aberration can make your images look really ugly, so always make sure to check Remove Chromatic Aberration. Let me zoom in. You can see this green border along the edge of the mountains. Once I click on that box, this green edge is gone. This can also be done manually by switching over to the Manual tab, pick the eyedropper tool and click on the green border for the same effect. In this tab you will also find a vignetting slider if you want to add this effect to your images. Enabling the profile corrections might help you fixing lens distortions and some weird exposure changes throughout the image. In this case you can see the vignetting effect of the lens will get less visible. To further counter the lens distortion, you can use the auto button in the transform panel. This will straighten all the lines and thus you get a very symmetrical looking image. There are also buttons to automatically level the image or just change the vertical lines. If you want to do this manually, you can do that by using the guided upright tool by clicking on that little circle right here. Once activated, you can drag a line along the vertical lines of the building and let's create a second line on the other side. And with those two lines, Lightroom will fix the image. In the effects tab, there's not much going on, but you can get a vignetting effect with way more control over the vignetting settings. Using the slider for the shadows, you can get rid of color casts. In this case, we do have a very strong green color cast, so let's bring it up more into the purple range to fix that. Another way to get autumn colors is to bring down the blue primary hue. You can also bring up the saturation for a stronger effect. Bringing down the blue primary hue also helps our sunsets to get warmer, more intense colors. Raising the red primary hue will give you more intense foliage generally. To get the before and after view, just hit the before and after icon in the bottom left corner. Clicking on it more than once will give you different perspectives. To apply the same looking style on different images, the reference view will help you. To activate the reference view, in the bottom left corner you can find the icon for that. To set up the reference photo, just pick one from the thumbnails down below and drag it into the empty space. Again, clicking this icon will get you different views. You can actually stretch the development tab on the right side to get much larger sliders. Larger sliders will help you get more precise adjustments. Another way for more precise adjustments is to just hold down the shift key and then drag the sliders. They will increase or decrease at a much slower rate. If you want to reset the slider quickly, just double click on the pin. You can hold down the Alt key and click on the section title to reset everything below. If you want to edit several versions of the same image, you can create a virtual copy. To do that, right click on the thumbnail and say create virtual copy. Alright, and those were the 70 tips I wanted to show you. I hope this was interesting and there was some new information in here. If you have any questions, as always, feel free to ask me in the comments and I will try to answer them. So thank you very much for watching this video and see you guys next time.